Everybody, Big Bucket of Chicken, episode 3.8, me, Lou Rayo, and of course, Kevin McClure, uh, doing the uh, video podcast extravaganza, eight, episode 8, so it's been two months since we've been back, so it's pretty cool. Uh, we do have some viewers. Um, first topic I want to jump right into, I was reading about it today. Now, as most people who know me know, and you of course know, I am not a sports fan. I don't care. I mean, I'll oh, you're not. Just, I'm not. No. Sure. So this uh, Matt uh, Kaepernick from the uh, Colin Kaepernick, Colin, Colin Kaepernick from the the quarterback from the San Francisco 49ers. I read about what, what he did yesterday during a preseason game. He refused to stand during the national anthem in solidarity with co- people of color, you know, being persecuted and the racism in the country. And listen, whatever it is, whatever his exact issue is, he has the right to do so. I mean, some people are flipping out and burning his jersey and saying he's un-American and posting. I mean, I've seen like 10 memes already today of like soldiers with no legs, like standing up in their wheelchair and, you know, uh, jet fighters with American flags, like hanging off of them. And it's like, if you don't love it, you can just get out. So uh, uh, I got to say this, like, that's the whole point of America, at least the concept of America. You have the right to protest. You have the right to make a stand, you know, non-violently. I mean, he could also get a gun and start killing cops, and that could be a protest as well. I'm not, I, that's wrong. I don't agree with that. I don't want that to see any more of that happening. But it's, my opinion is, listen, it's America. The country was founded on a lie, built on blood, and now here we are in 2016. It's been over, you know, it's been 200 fucking years, over 200 years, and, uh, you know, it started up before the Revolutionary War. It was colonies. And the the greedy fucking colony lords, Washington being one of the biggest landowners, wanted to fucking, you know, just t- kill all the Indians and take over the rest of the country and for the resources and make all the money. They rebelled against their own government, which was the British. We were British. And then lied and said it was about fucking no representation before taxation and blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit. It's all built in lie. All men are created equal. Still, not today. All men are not created equal. So... Let's get off our high horses and the Patriots are coming out and Hey all you un American bastards! If you don't like America, why don't you get out? The guy fucking didn't stand there on a national anthem. He didn't eat a baby in the fifty yard line, which would have been hilarious, but he didn't do that. So again, I know I'm not a sports fan and I don't give a shit about a millionaire not standing for the national anthem, but he's got the fucking right to do it. And that's what America that's the real America. You have the right to not stand in protest, or you have the right to stand in protest, or whatever. I don't know. What do you think about it? <laughs> I mean, like, what, what do you think? You know what it is? is um, I never really liked Colin Kaepernick. I always thought he was kind of like a fucking douchey guy. Um, if you ever look at, like, his Twitter or anything like that, he's like a real, like, just he just he just seems like a real piece of shit. And I think that's the general consensus with a lot of people. Like, he's a fuck... He's kind of like an immature guy, okay. um, so it just it's it's a, I think it's hysterical that this is the guy that's doing it. Like it's not like a guy that's like well respected. It's like this guy, this guy for the most part, like throughout his career has been kind of like a you know shuns the media and like always acts like a like he's better than everybody else type of person. Um, so I think it's for attention. I mean his career is not going so well these days. Uh, you know he. he He's not a starter anymore. He was benched. Last. He was just awful last year as a player. Okay. Again, I don't know him personally, um, sure. Sure but I think don't. the fact that it's—I think the fact that it's this guy is what pisses uh, people off uh, the most. All right. Yeah. It's not. It's not like if it was a guy that like people really liked, uh, I think it would be different. But it, the fact that it's this guy, I think, is why people are going crazy. Because there have been some examples of things that like signed, you know. Uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, three St. Louis Rams came out with their hands up. Yeah. I think it was after a shooting. I think it was the – what was the St. Louis place? Uh, what was the big shooting over there? Uh, oh, Missouri. It was Mike Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. So they did that. And then I don't know if you remember, but LeBron and a couple other people wore I Can't Breathe T-shirts. Um, so they did – they done stuff like that. 
Um, but again, this guy is not a good guy. He's not well respected. Um, so give me a minute. You can chime in with that. <laughs> I can chime in on my own my own topic. So okay, that's I guess that's what it is. Like, then what if Brett? What if, if so? I guess maybe if Brett Favre, if Brett Favre, you know, and people are like, well, Brett Favre would never do it because he's American, bro. But let's say a Brett Favre or a fucking Emmett Smith or a fucking. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember Jerry Rice or something. I don't. There's only like six football players' names that I can name that anyone would fucking know. Uh, you know, Troy Aikman or something. Uh, Cowboys. I'm naming Cowboys. Why? Um, everyone hates the Cowboys. But uh, if one of those guys fucking did it, maybe it wouldn't be as much backlash. I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking people are getting on their high horse over nothing, and the country's so fucking divided right now. And the reality is, you know, a small percentage of the population is voting for Hillary Clinton. A small percentage of the population is voting for Donald Trump. The rest of us are just sitting back going like, whatever, it's fucking on fire, man. Like, who gives a shit? And when these little bullshit things happen, like a football player doesn't stand up for the national anthem, the whole fucking social media uh, uh, web space fucking catches on fire and everyone just like shits their pants. So, Sorry so, about that. No, it's all right, man. Did you hear what I said? So, so what, do you think? what do you think? You think if like a Brett Favre, if Brett Favre didn't stand up during the national anthem, it would be less, less anti-American shit flying around, or do you think it would be the same? Well, I mean, I, I don't know why Brett Favre would stand up for what Kaepernick was saying. I mean, he doesn't really have anything to do with no, it. No, but Kaepernick... imagine, imagine a, an iconic, someone with more respect, a, if a, a, an Emmett Smith, a, a, a Jerry <laughs> Rice. Though. I mean, there's there's been a few people that protested some things. Uh, there's there's this first baseman who played for a long time, Carlos Delgado. Um, there was a there was a basketball player. I think it was named uh, Abdur uh, Sharif Abdur Rahim or something like that. Abdul something like that. He protested. He was suspended actually for a game for doing that. Okay. Um, for not standing up or doing something like that. But the whole thing is, is like, I, I, I see your point, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's America. Yeah, um, but expect to get your ass kicked in the press and, and from other, because other players have tweeted, like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Yeah. You see what the Giants did? The Giants in their preseason game, they actually all lined up like it was a military thing. Yeah, and they all stood, all the players. And I do like the fact that we're seeing more pictures with people in a wheelchair, like, standing up, like, Conan Kaepernick, look at this guy! Yeah. Like yes, yeah. that one. I mean, again, I get it. I mean, it's it's disrespecting military and all that stuff. Again, it has nothing to do. It's not disrespecting the military. Not well, that's what people think. You know, it disrespects the military and the people who died for this country. Yeah, again, it's all things. Again, that's that's easy to say, easy to criticize, and he's made himself an easy target. Okay. But the problem is, is that he's been an easy target for about four years now. Right. Any, but anything he does, everybody shits on. If you look, so, I mean, I know you don't follow sports, but look up his career. He's just very a very polarizing guy. He's a guy that, um, you know, you see some pictures where he's taking selfies with his rock hard abs and wearing a <laughs> wearing a baseball hat, and you're like, who the fuck are you? You know. And so I don't. I have no sympathy for all the backlash. Again, you know, he can do what he wants. He's go, he says he's going to do it every time. That's great. I I hope. Uh, you know, again, football fans aren't exactly the smartest people sometimes. So, you know, good luck in the other stadiums. Uh, you know, make sure there's extra security because you don't want to piss off some, like, Raiders fan with, like, spiked shoulder pads and a skull helmet. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. So, that. yeah. So, okay. Um, so, basically, what you're saying is that it makes sense. Like, because he's a fucking skull. Like, if it's mentioned, like, a Derek, not a Derek Jeter, an A Rod did something like yeah. this. People would well, just like just, hate A-Rod. Yeah, people. some people hate him. So if it was Derek Jeter, they'd be like, well, you know what? Maybe he's got a point. If like, okay, a good example is like Peyton Manning. If like fucking Peyton Manning did something like that, I don't know. Like maybe people wouldn't go to like Papa John's anymore or something. <laughs> I don't think it would be like such a big deal. Like, oh, well, Peyton, I think there would be more people like, Peyton has a right to do what he wants. He's Peyton Manning. Yeah. But since this tool bag fucking it has to do it, um, this 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 fucking second rate quarterback uh, for the Forty uh, ers okay. who's probably not even going to start this year because he's terrible. Well, he's uh, not starting now. I mean, he's definitely not starting now. Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, I mean, the Niners are not supposed to be a really good team this year, so he's definitely going to play some. But um, again, it, it, we'll see how it goes. You know, if it continues like this, and which is will will get worse for him as far as 
the backlash or we'll just be like, yeah, well, he has a right. Um, but yeah, fuck Ka Colin Kaepernick. Like I said, read up on him. I'm sure you know who he is. Anybody that watches sports or football and has the same opinion as me. I don't even think 49er fans really like the guy. So uh, he doesn't seem like a good guy. He kind of seems like an arrogant prick uh, who's not really that great, who feels very entitled. He's a multimillionaire. And, you know, again, if I had millions of dollars and I didn't stand up at a thing, I, I would stand up at a national anthem and I would expect the same thing. I, I think he expected this. There's no way he didn't think this wasn't going to, you know, make a big deal. Um, you know, the coach did say the previous game he didn't do it and no one said anything, but then I guess someone noticed on Twitter or some shit and then it blew up. So, huh. all right, that, that makes sense. But, yeah. finish, but, the, but the main idea is, is fuck Colin Kaepernick. I don't give a shit why he did it. I'm sure he has a good reason. I'm sure America's great and you can do whatever you want, but there are shitty people in this country and he seems to be one of them. So right. fuck him. <laughs> okay, well there we go. Fuck Colin Kaepernick. Fuck him. All right, I, I agree. Let's fuck him for being a fucking douche. But like I said, I, I feel like it's about like I said, fifty percent of social media seems to be for, and fifty percent seems against, and it's just one of those I, things. I say it's more. I think it's more on the side of there's there's more than fifty percent against him. Yeah, well against him because he's a fucking piece of shit. But I'm just seeing, I was seeing an equal amount of like he has the right to do what he has to do. So maybe sixty forty. Fine, sixty forty. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, I, I saw it be a little bit, little bit earlier today. I think it happened this morning, or it happened uh, uh, last night. Apparently, I believe it was United Airlines or maybe even American Airlines. Uh, a flight was supposed to be scheduled. 141 people were returning from Scotland to fly to, hey Kylie, to fly to New Jersey, and. The two pilots, I don't know how, they, they, the two pilots were stopped at the gate and were arrested, and everyone had to wait 10 hours because they were drunk. They were visibly, I guess one was 35, one was 45. They were so visibly, they must have been so visibly drunk. Didn't that, you didn't, the article didn't specify how drunk, but I guess drunk enough for like a stewardess or a, an air marshal, like, dude, seriously, like, you can't fly this plane. Like, I got it, bro. I totally, we, we got this. And they didn't let him fly. And, like, people were tweeting in Scotland, like, what's going on? I see police. No one's telling us anything. So they didn't even tell the passengers anything. They made them wait 10 hours while another flight landed in Scotland. And then they just swapped out the pilots. They just took the pilots from the other plane and made them fly the people home to New Jersey, I guess, this morning or this afternoon. So this goes to, like, all the times, like, you know, you know me, I... I Flying is a weird thing for me. Most people look at me and roll their eyes like, dude, it's so safe. Just get in the plane and fly. Why can't you do it? Don't be a big fat pussy. And it's like because when two fucking pilots think they can, you know, they're, they're Tom Cruise and Top Gun and they can just fucking, hi, you know, highway to the danger zone all the way back to New York Airport and they fall asleep mid-Atlantic and the plane runs out of gas in fucking Canada and crashes into a fucking, I don't know, a moose. And the NTSB has to like piece it together, like Mike, like Lego-sized pieces of the plane. Like, well, the plane seemed to be fine. We can't figure it out. And there's not enough matter of the pilots left, so they could never tell that they were drunk or not, because there's like only mush left of them. And then it's one of those fucking mysteries, like the, and then all these conspiracy theorists are like, well, it's the Bermuda Triangle, and it was uh, vapors in the sky, and time, a time warp opened up, a rift in the universe, and threw the plane off course. That's why they, were, they weren't they were flying to New Jersey. They ended up in Canada. And it becomes a whole fucking thing because two guys were like, fuck it, 10 a.m.? We're drinking vodka. And then we're going to fly this. It was a 757. It was a fucking gigantic plane. It wasn't a fucking Cessna. So yeah, you definitely haven't been up in an air traffic controller uh, tower lately, have you? That, that was like that was like some like guy like tripping on mushrooms. Like, yeah, man, the Bermuda Triangle is going to rock the course of the plane, man. We can't even have scotch. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think the one thing with with that is I think it's kind of weird to me that like people can treat like flying a plane as if like they're going down to their down their street to go to Seven Eleven on a beer run. Like, yeah. It's so weird to me that like it doesn't it doesn't like they, they don't get it through their head like yeah that's your day job but that means you have to be aware and focused at all times while you're in a cockpit and it just really think you really want to think about you know those guys got caught but how yeah. many times does it really happen how many times is 
is is Denzel Washington type people flying <laughs> fucking planes. Exactly. Water, water now, chief. You and you know, it's like they're they're like their nine to five job. Like, yeah, I gotta go to fucking South Carolina. Fuck these people. Welcome to Delta. You exactly. Know, like, it's, exactly. You know, it's 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 not like you know. There's no. Che- I don't think there's a lot of like checking out the, what these guys are doing all day. Of course. They're, they're probably most of them are fucking miserable. It's like really like I mean, it's not like it's not like you fly somewhere cool and like can can just like hang out. You know. You're you're most of the time stuck in like the airports and the shitty food yeah. that's like fifteen dollars more than it should be. The the bars, you know, like so it's not like you're like welcome to lovely Dominican Republic. You're not going there. Yeah, you're exactly. fucking getting another flight back to fucking well, Savannah. Some of them Georgia. do. Some of them do. Some of them, you know, they land and they have three days to fuck around, and then I mean, of course, they don't three always. Three days like, to fuck around, yeah. Three days of uh, hookers and blow and whatever else we can get our hands on. Then it's right back on Monday to JFK Airport. Yeah, I just like that's like, what I was thinking in my head. And you know what it said? The article said something that was great. Over here. The article said something that was awesome. The article said, the article said they apparently when they were in custody, the air marshal or whoever I don't think breathalyzed. I'm assuming they have, at this point have breathalyzed them and checked their blood. I mean, it's a serious thing. They were they were like suspended. But they exceeded the allotted amount of alcohol that pilots are allowed. So pilots are allowed to be a little buzzed. It's like, I just like, in my head, I'm just like, they're at the fucking airport bar. How did they get caught? They must have been seen at the bar just like, like doing shots of fucking fireballs. Like, oh shit, we got to fucking do this thing. You know, throw their fucking okay, sky. Like, fucking like blasting white snake in the bar. <laughs> exactly. Gotta go, guys. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. No, that's cool too because I, I feel like what they should do is they should get like the breathalyzer things that they put in the people's cars when they get the UWIs. Yeah. So it's like first offense, like you gotta like to fly the plane, you gotta keep like blowing into it, and like and, and, it, and it should be like how it how it is set up with those breathalyzer things where you can be driving like for an hour and then it will start beeping and make you do it while you're driving, no matter how dangerously in traffic you are. Yeah. So I feel like that'd be cool if like they, they install one of those things and then like an hour into the flight it's like, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're gonna have to divert our flight to Tampa, Florida, as Bob just failed his sobriety test. Exactly. And I think it'd be awesome. Oh god. Like, oh, damn it! I thought I was gonna blow it. I told you to blow it at this time, man. Why couldn't you blow it with it? Come on! <laughs> You've ruined this whole thing for me. And it just scares me because like you said, you know, how many times is it happening and no one's catching? Because, who, like, I remember when I flew, like, listen, last time I flew was the last time I flew for 15 years before that was high school. So I can only talk about that because I don't remember the high school flight. I, be, I barely remember being on the plane. So the flight uh, that day, you know, we're sitting, you're sitting there in, like, those chairs by your gate waiting for, like, whatever, fucking, you know, the, to, to them to let you on the plane. And the pilots just show up. The, the, the pilots going to the pilots go, going from Vegas to New York were a man and a woman. The man was the the man was the pilot, and the female was the co-pilot. And you're just sitting there, and they just show up with their fucking carry-on, and they like wave to everyone like, "Hey!" And they bullshit with the fucking stewardesses and the flight attendants, and then they fucking get on the plane. So no one, it's no no one's like flashing a light in their eye like, "All right, Johnny, let's." Yeah. Uh, are you fatigued? Are you tired? Did you have seven beers ten minutes ago? Okay, get on. Yeah, let's do this. So it's just but I think, horrifying. I think if they are like that, though, I think it'd be kind of cool to like really sell the fact that this is like going to be the party plane. Like, like when they get on the intercom, like some, like, are you ready to rumble? Like Jock Jams comes on. Like, welcome to the headlines, everyone. Yeah, how's everybody doing? Yeah, we're about three inches in, and uh, buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy one. Here's your flight attendant, Dora. Dora comes to us from, where are you from, Dora? I don't know. I just like staring at your tits. Oh, boy, be sure to tip her well. You know, like, just like, fucking, like, MC, like, it's like, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah. 
best flight ever. Meanwhile, it's like that guy's like completely out of it. He doesn't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't remember. He blacked out like an hour into the flight. Like, I don't fucking know. Where were we? Like, he just wakes up and he's like on the, he's on the landing strip somehow. He just fucking comes out of it. Holy <laughs> shit. Did we land that shit? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. We did, didn't we? Welcome everyone. It's like everyone's off the plane and he's like, he, like everybody's like got off the plane and then he like wakes up. It's like, all right, welcome everyone. It's like no one's on the plane. He doesn't realize it. He's like talking to no one. At the no, that's a, that would be part of that. Sounds exciting, you know, the, the whole fucking like pulling up the bottle of like Fireball to his lips. Like, looks like we're about to hit turbulence. Bloop, 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 bloop. And doing like drinking games. Like every time a lightning bolt hits the plane, let's do a shot. And uh, yeah, but like you know, like, like in uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, not not Fear and Loathing in um, where the Buffalo Roam. <laughs> When he's on the, 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 they have like the, the flight that's for like all the journalists and the flight for all the crew and the camera people. And like Hunter gets on that flight, it's like the shit show flight. The captain literally is drunk and drinking beers and shit. Like, who gives a fuck? We're going to die someday. Whatever, man. I just took a mescaline. Yeah, I feel like I want I would want to like open a business like that. Like if my airline would like recreate like the 1970s rock scene. So yeah. every, air, every airplane like, there's like just cut blow on each like 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 table. Like there's there's just endless amounts of alcohol. Everybody is like having sex. It's like it's like that's what I would want to do. And I would want to create like it's like and then you get to choose like your plane. Like you want the Led Zeppelin plane or like the Leonard Skinner plane or something like that. I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah, I I like that idea. Like, but like people coming with their families and it's like. Hey, we got Coke for kids. It's it's totally not Coke. Nah, just kidding. It's totally Coke. Come on, little <laughs> Billy. It's like, eh, eh, I like flying. I'm paranoid. You're just, <laughs> you know, it's fucking retarded. So, uh, I wanted to jump in next to your, uh, uh, you know, Kevin's best of Marvel. You brought up a you brought up a character today that I think the world really needs to know more about because the fact that it, like last week we did uh, Eternity <laughs> Century. Which was it was a piece of shit. It's a fucking waste of ink. And then you brought you you showed me a picture of one today, and I was wrong. T- compared to this guy, Trinity Century is Iron Man compared to this guy. Like, <laughs> please begin. Okay. So this week's best of Marvel. Is a character named the Phone Ranger, <laughs> not the Lone Ranger. The Phone Ranger. So just to describe, first of all, his real name is A. G. Bell, as in Alexander Graham Bell is his name. So he's a character that his costume, he has he, his his. his Wait a second. His, what is that in your hand? What do you have there? Is that oh, like it's a back Oh, I thought you had like the claw. Oh no. First of all, if I ever lost an arm, I think I would want to get re- get it replaced with this. I think it just looks kind of cool. Like <laughs> it's got it's got five fingers. I think uh, it's perfect. Yeah. It's and it's not a, it's inexpensive. It's at the Dollar Tree. Uh, so, anyways, the Phone Ranger, uh, his costume is looks like a telephone. He's got he's got like the the the, the receiver handle and in, in, in the in the and the receiver on the back of his neck. Uh, so there's like a, there's like a phone that can come off the hook in case he needs to make a phone call. He has all the numbers on his stomach too. Um, so I don't know what happens. I guess like people come up to him and go, "Hey, phone ranger, I really need to call my grandmother in North Carolina. Do you mind if I make a long distance call on your stomach?" Yeah. That's about what it looks like that you can just go up to him and take the phone behind his back of his neck oh. and then dial his stomach. I don't know. I mean, you'll show a picture of him, I'm sure. But this is his biography. He was yeah. Uh, yeah. born in Boston, Massachusetts, and made a living as a telephone repairman in New York City. One day, Bell was called in to repair a telephone that had been smashed to pieces by its owner, who flew into a rage at the constant prank calls they had been receiving. In reality, the prank calls were distress signals from a tiny spaceship that had fled from a subatomic universe and somehow ended up trapped within the phone receiver. Oh my Upon re- examining the broken telephone, Bell realized that the aliens had left some of their technology behind within the phone. Of course. Replicating the technology, Bell fashioned a costume of his own design that allowed him to connect with any telecommunication system in existence 
and the phone ranger was born. Oh my god. Um so that's the thing is is that that's really what he does. Like that's it. He's there to like if you need to like make a phone call, he'll dial it for you, I guess. Or he I don't know. I mean he's he's a superhero. No. Uh, he's a he's a good guy. Um it's very strange. Uh, but I just, I don't know what to say. I mean, what use does he have? Like, you, if you're in battle, what the fuck are you calling him for? Plus, you gotta call him, right? <laughs> is that what he wants? Hello? Do you, do you need to, like... <laughs> yeah, he has to, like, pick up the phone from behind the back of his neck. And, and I don't... Like, what is he gonna do? Like, he doesn't have any offensive capabilities. It's not like he's shooting, I don't know... Nothing. Numbers or I don't know, hitting with phone books. I, I don't know, but it was meant as a joke, I guess. But he he ended up like being a real character. Uh, so then uh, the phone ranger, everyone, the phone ranger, the phone ranger. Well, the thing I like about I mean, even more than all of that, you know, the backstory is he was like a phone repairman or something. And look at the picture. And, like, every superhero, no matter what their origins are, they're fucking just, except for the blob, the slug, they're all just jacked. He, like, just was happened to be, like, a jacked, super strong guy. And then one day a phone broke and he found a, an, a, 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 a microscopic alien technology. And then, oh, good, I'm going to focus on phone stuff. Because who the fuck wrote that? Who drew it? Who approved it? Like, I, it's fucking retarded. I, I love it. I love it. Kev, did I lose you? Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Technical. All right, technical troubles are over. Kev, what were you saying? Uh, you're, what were you, what were you gonna, how are you going to end the show now that we're back? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I think the phone ranger disconnected us. Sorry about that. That was fucking. Uh, fu that's funny that we were talking about the phone ranger, and all of a sudden Skype was like, "It's real. Go fuck yourself." <laughs> like we're using dial-up or something. Like he, he somehow found a way. <laughs> um, I was talking on Friday. I never gotten it before either. I don't know if you're wrong. Like the the Amber Alert showed up on my phone, and I and I think you said that the same thing happened to you. I'd never gotten that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever gotten the Amber Alert before? Yeah, not oh. only have I gotten the Amber Alert, I got the Amber Alert on Friday, and then last week I got one for the flash flood warning, where I guess if it's like an emergency type situation, it just automatically, like my phone gives off that like sound of like the emergency broadcast noise, like rrr, rrr. I put, actually yeah. post, I actually post something on Friday afternoon because it, it got me at like one thirty, and it was like a girl is missing in Pennsylvania, so and she's in a silver Elantra. I was like, oh good. It's 400 miles away from me, and it's in the most popular vehicle on the planet. I'll keep an eye out, I guess, vigilance or something. Yeah. Well, what are we supposed to do though? Like, I, I don't know. Like, what do you is are you supposed to spring into action? I guess it just and so. Any little girl that's like with a man, like you're supposed to go. Where are you from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I'm gonna I'm gonna be on the Sunrise Highway in my truck. And see a silver Elantra with a kid in the backseat with like a note up to the window. These aren't my parents. Gotcha. And chase him down and have like a fucking high speed chase on News 12. I also think, you know, again, I understand why it's called Amber Alert. But let's do like the name of the kid alert, you know? Like well, what's the is. kid's name? Is. No, I'm saying like this kid. Oh, yeah. What yeah. that, that I, I want, I think I'd rather have that. Because it confuses me when I see the bit, like they find her. And then her name's not Amber. I'm like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm looking for Amber, and this fucking girl pops up. Like, yeah. totally misleading. I've been looking for the wrong person the whole time. I'm, like, walking around rural Pennsylvania going, Amber! Amber! And this girl's name is, like, I don't know, Lynn or something. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Apparently right? this... Do you agree with me on that, though? Uh... Like, it's... it's... <laughs> I think it'll be. I think it'll be even more hilarious. Unfortunately, it's it's fucked up. You know, when someone gets taken, I didn't follow the story. I know she was found in Manhattan, actually. Yeah, she, she was. Yeah. So I guess the, the guy did come toward towards New York, obviously. But yeah, if it was like Shaniqua alert or like Meg or like. But this, but my question is, 
I'm not making light of what happened, but yeah. does he get the Amber, Amber Alert too? <laughs> like, does he get notified? He's like, oh, shit, they're looking for me. God damn it. That's true. I mean, I didn't, they, that's or is it, like, is it like a prestigious thing for like a person like that? Like, got out <laughs> Got on the Amber Alert list. All right, yeah. moving up in the world, moving up in the criminal world. Part of me feels that my brain for a second. He I was like, it. I got it. You got it. Like it went off twice when I went to a comedy show on Friday night. But that's, that's the thing. Like it, he has to get it and go. They're on to me. Yeah, yeah. Because we got it. I didn't yeah. even think of that. That the guy has a cell phone, probably like everyone else in the fucking free world. And yeah, he he's got driving, it, man. he's escaping Pennsylvania. It's like, bloop, bloop. He's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, you know yeah, what? Yeah. I, I looked it up. I tried to look up statistics like, do these help? Are sending out Amber Alerts help? Because you know what I saw? I made a joke of it like last year or two years ago. You ever see they have, uh, it's called like a silver alert or something like that. Whenever an elderly person goes missing, like, in, uh, and, uh, you know, they have Alzheimer's or something, it's like looking for, you know, <laughs> looking for Uncle Bill. He's in a green Jaguar. It's like, Jesus Christ, the guy's driving around in his own car and it's lost. And the worst thing I saw was, it's not a silver alert. It's something else. It's called a name. I'll, 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 I'll post it up in the description if I can find it. It's, uh, I was driving on, I was going to work one morning. It was like 8.30 in the morning. And there's a fucking alert. Missing adult. You know, drives yeah. 1999 Taurus Silver or blue, whatever, and they give a license plate. I'm thinking, this is actually more horrifying than the fact that someone's missing. Like, a, a full-grown man was taken by, I assume, a super beast or a, a sociopath, so let's find that guy. Because if you find the guy missing, you're the next fucking victim. Like, you're dead. It's like, hey, I found no, you. I don't, know about uh, that. Uh, uh. I, I don't even know about that. I, I honestly think it's just, like, people that, like, Go to Atlantic City for like a weekend and don't tell anybody, and then they're like, "Ah, oh, where did he? he's gone? He's been kidnapped!" And then he shows up two days later with a fucking five o'clock shadow, completely hungover. You were looking for me? What the fuck? You give a shit about me? Like, what the hell is this? Yeah, I feel like when I see that, it's not, it's not like someone got murdered. It was it's more like a sixty-year-old like, guy. Someone, someone's trying to get away with their wife. Someone doesn't want to hang out with her wife this week. That's what's going on there. <laughs> or a fifty-year-old guy. I should say, it should say, uh, lonely wife and kids driving, or you know, like driving a green sedan and it, on his way out. You know, like some, yeah. something along those lines. It's like, it's like doesn't want responsibilities anymore. Call this number if you see him. Yeah, senile eighty-year-old mother looking for her fifty-year-old son who still lives at home. He he's either missing or he's at the OTB. So keep a lookout. Right. He's at he's at the the fucking Magic the Gathering expo. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking weird. I, I'm glad you brought that up. I I got the Amber Alert, and um, you know, it just like it like takes over your phone. It's like a text message in a black background. Like whatever's happening in your phone, it just like shuts it off. It's like we can access your phone at all times. Like we have the emergency alert system. Yeah, it kind of feels like that. Yeah, like, kind of feels. It kind of feels like I'm not like I'm being tracked. Or like we could just get like no matter what, you, we can give you a message, or we could detonate your phone and blow you up at any time. So you know, fuck you. First of all, the emergency broadcast testing is never fucking, like, devastatingly horrifying. Like, I don't know if you ever, like, watch TV at, like, 2 in the morning and that shit happens. I really feel like the world and that fucking... And this is guy. It sounds like he's he's in like a bunker. He sounds like that's where he's talking from to tell me that there's a, fl a flash flood warning in yeah. in some bullshit Dutchess County upstate like that might come down to Long Island. Yeah. But I remember that, and I was always just like, God damn! Like that is like the scariest fucking thing. I'm like, I'm trying to watch uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air at Nick and Night, and all of a sudden this thing just like completely ruins my fucking night. I can't sleep. I'm shivering because of that fucking noise. It's, it's, you know what? It's never at a. It's never a good time. It's two o'clock. It's, like, it's never like eight o'clock. It's always like 
late night bullshit television. You're seven beers in. You've eaten a whole bag of Doritos, and then this fucking thing just ruins everything. Yeah. Well, you know what? For me, when I was a kid, <laughs> it didn't so much scare me as it busted. It busted me. What I would do is, you know, I'd be like eleven, and my parents say, "Go to bed." And I'd say, okay, and then I'd wait for them to go to bed, and then because there was only one TV in the de- in the living room, and I would sneak into the living room and watch like Beavis and Butthead or like whatever, Nick at Night at TV Land had just come out, and watch like Hogan's Heroes or some shit, and I'd be like, have the, the you know the volume's on like two, so you can hear it, but it's not gonna wake my dad up in the next room, and then the EAS comes on, and it's fucking the TV automatically just gets changed to full volume. <laughs> Yeah. And your dad comes running out of the room like, what happened? You're like, uh, creepy. I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll get up at 2.30 in the morning on a Tuesday. Um, Everybody's dead, God. Everybody's dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So um, I think we're going to wrap it up here. It was a good show. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the the phone ranger. It's my arm. Yeah. It's I my hope- arm. Unfortunately, it's now I kind of hope you you lose a limb so you can actually get that like jammed into your fucking forearm. Like, here, oh, take my hand. Ah, come on, <laughs> you're gonna fall unless you take my hand. No, give me your other hand. Oh, my other hand isn't strong enough. You take my little hand. No. By the way, that's my next uh, Marvel character next week. You're gonna see. Oh, all right, we'll see. All right, uh, thanks for watching and. Uh, Peace. Look out, moon. America's gonna get you. Gonna go kaboom. Was nice to admit you. Cause you don't mess around with God's America.